Good morning, everybody. Hi, yeah. It's lovely to be here on this lovely sunny day, and we welcome those who are here and also those who are watching now at home um, or later. And today is a special day. It's called Trinity Sunday, and it's a Christian festival that falls on the first Sunday after Pentecost. And today we're going to celebrate the mystery of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to look at some ways to help us understand that a little bit later. And we often mention the Trinity in services, prayers, and songs. And a couple of weeks ago, we had Lucas's baptism, you might remember. And in that service, he was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if you've been baptized, that would be the same for you. So, believing in these three distinct forms is a matter of complete faith and trust. And we come today on Trinity Sunday to show our love for and our faith in the Trinity through our praise and worship. So, we're going to begin our service today by joining in with the call to worship and if you could join in with the words in bold. O Lord, our sovereign God, you are neither made nor fashioned by anyone. Wonderful beyond measure, you are faithful Father, servant Son, and enlivening Spirit. Holy Lord, beautiful and dynamic, intimately united as a society of love. You are our creator and cause. You are our perfect saviour. You are our intercessor and giver of spiritual gifts. The Lord of all has called us forth. Our triune God has made us good. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God's holy name. And we're going to lift our hearts and voices now to sing, sing to the splendor of our King, remembering that he is with us always. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, the darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. Oh, 
love it for the children to come to the front. I've got lots of things to show you and talk about. So if you'd like to sit down and look this way. Look this way. Great. Thank you. Oh, we've got loads today. That's fantastic. Okay. We've got lots of things to look at and think about. I'm just going to bring this forward a little bit. Now, the Trinity, it's quite a tricky thing to understand, even for grown-ups, isn't it? So I've brought a few things along from my shopping this week um, that kind of stuck out at me when I was walking around Tesco's. And I hope that some of them will help you to understand what it, what it means. So, the first part of the word Trinity is try, and that means three. So I'm going to need you to do a hand action. So every time I say three in one, I need you to do this. Three in one. Can you do that? Three in one. And the grown-ups can join in if they want to. Okay, so the first thing, um, there should be a picture coming up soon for everybody at the back. So first thing, three in one oil. That was the first thing I thought of because I'm a gardener and I have an allotment. My wheelbarrow's been very squeaky lately, so I needed some three-in-one oil to stop it from squeaking. Now, the reason it's called three-in-one is because the oil in it does three different things. So it lubricates, that means it, it makes the joint move nicely and not squeak, and it cleans, and it also prevents rust from forming. So... It's three in one. Okay, now the next thing I found were dishwasher tablets. And I wonder if, could you tell me how many colours there are in there? There's three, aren't there? So there's three ingredients in this one tablet. And there's salt to help soften the, um, soften the water. And... There's rinse aid to make all your glasses sparkle and there's detergent which cleans it all. So it's three in one, okay? Next thing, same thing with uh, washing liquid. And that's a bit easier to see for everybody. Can you see there's three different colors there? But there's three three in one and again it's detergent that's to clean it's got a nice smell in there and it's got a stain remover so you can use all those three things on their own but together they make something really really special now the next one is now I didn't even know this existed but three in one coffee so instead of having what's that milk coffee and sugar all separately you can get it all in a little sachet and you just have to sprinkle it in your cup and add water to it so it's got three different ingredients but it makes one drink can you do three in one in one okay now the next thing you might be more interested in lego creator anybody got any of that yeah and it's called three in one because you've got one kit, but you can make three different models out of it. So you've got all the right bits, but you can make three different types of models. And I don't know what they are. They're a lion, a warthog, and an ostrich. That's it. Well done. Next one. Let's see what the next one is. Now, who likes ice cream? Do you like ice cream? So, I wonder if you can tell me what flavours of ice cream are in, in that picture. Hannah? What flavours are in? 
vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. So they're all yummy on their own, aren't they? But they make a special ice cream called Neapolitan. That's right. Okay. Now, um, this is the last thing I'm going to show you. So I need to come behind here. And I hope it hasn't all disappeared. So this time, what can you see on the screen? What can you see in the picture? Ice. Ice. There's ice cubes. You want to put your hand in there? You don't have to take one out, just because <laughs> it will get a bit messy, won't it? Just feel it. So that's ice. That's solid, isn't it? Solid water. Yeah. What will happen in a little while, though? It'll melt, won't it? Do you want to feel it? Yeah. So we've got ice. Um, what's the picture with the little child looking through? Not condensation. Think about water. Frost. Now, this is the closest I can get to try and show you this. You have to imagine this is frost. Could you write the word frost in there? Could you write it? On that? Go on then, with your finger. There we go. Okay, so we've got ice, we've got frost. And what else have we got? No, now I promise I will be hoovering this up. <laughs> what have we got? Snowflakes, haven't we? So, so there's three distinct forms of water. Okay, boys. Boys. There's three distinct forms of water, but they're all made of water, aren't they? Now, let's have a look at the last picture. Okay, so there's a triangle there, and this is the important bit to, th to think about this morning. We've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. So God the Father, Christians believe he is the creator of the world. He's everywhere, all the time, and he loves us. He loves you and me. And then we've got God the Son, and God's Son Jesus lived on earth, didn't he? And we've, we've got lots of stories about him. And he died for us and came to life again, showing that death is not the end. He did. Good remembering. And then we've got God the Holy Spirit. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is something that when you love God and Jesus, makes you feel different inside your heart. And you just want to tell everyone that you can, that, that to know God and Jesus like that too. Okay, so can we practice the three in one? Three in one. And then we're going to, the adults are going to read you um, a song. There's three verses of a song all about the Trinity. Okay, so if everyone could join in and we'll do the actions. Ready? God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, three in one. God the Father loves me so, gave his word so I would know. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, Three in one. Three in one and one in three. God the Son, he died for me. For my sins his blood he gave. Then he rose up from the grave. Three in one and one in three. God the Son. Three in one and one in three, God the Spirit lives in me. Day by day and hour by hour, 
helps me witness by his power. Three in one and one in three, God the Spirit lives in me. Okay, well done. I want to go sit down now. Try not to spread the snow all around the church. <laughs> Okay, we're going to come to a time of confession now and we're going to pray to the three distinct forms of God. As we think about times in the last week when we've neglected to do some things but also done some things that we shouldn't. Okay, children, children, can you go back to your seats now, please? Go back to your seats now, please. Thank you. So let's just um, have a moment of quiet where we reflect on the last week. Father God, when we take your creation for granted and fail to notice all the good things in our lives. Forgive us for being too busy to appreciate all you have done for us. Loving Lord, when we forget the enormity of your sacrifice and live as we please, forgive us for our apathy and disobedience. Holy Spirit, comforter, life giver, when we ignore the quiet small voice prompting us to serve. Forgive us for too often putting our own wants and desires before the needs of others. When we truly say sorry, it says in Psalm 103, verse 12, he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now Beryl is going to come and read us our first reading. This morning's reading is taken from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. And it's about faith brings joy. Therefore, since we have been made right in Christ, in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us to develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. We thank God for his word this morning. Okay, so we're going to sing a song now um, called Shine, which it would be great if the children would come and help with some actions. And uh, what we were talking about earlier was that the Holy Spirit fills us with a passion to share with others about God's love. And this song um, celebrates that.
and you love me. me. groups now so let's just say a prayer for them as they go lord we pray for the children this morning that they would learn something of you about how to shine amongst their friends and family this week amen and now we're going to sing the lord is gracious and compassionate So 
So Mike's going to come and read us our second reading, and then Dave will be doing the talk for us. It's from John 16, verses 12 to 15. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. <clears throat> when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring my, me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. So, as Jill has emphasised, this is Trinity Sunday. And Jill's given us a great introduction into the three in one. Now, some preachers shy away from preaching on the doctrine of the Trinity because they find it too hard, too hard to explain. But I feel very privileged to do so because for me, the Trinity is fundamental to my faith. I want to explore more about what it means for God to be three in one. It seems at first sight to be a contradiction, a nonsense. Judaism was the first great monotheistic religion believing in one God. Yet we see all through the Old Testament, it embraces God the Father as creator, his son, the long-awaited Messiah, and time and again, God's Spirit speaks to all the great prophets. So Christianity is not alone in recognising these three aspects of God but we have a more fully developed theology of the Trinity. Now, I hope Paul's able to put up the picture of Rublev's icon, a picture which we'll keep up through the rest of this talk. I find it very thought-provoking image when thinking about the Trinity. On the left... It shows the Father. Father God is the figure on the left. Jesus is in the middle. And on the right is the Holy Spirit. Notice that both Jesus and the Spirit are inclined towards and looking at the Father with their eyes downwards. And the Father is looking at both of them, eyes looking upwards. And this speaks of the relationship between the th three persons of the Trinity. The colours they are wearing are significant too. They're all wearing the godly blue. Notice there's a blue in each of their clothes The Father and the Spirit are also wearing a spiritual green, which is the dominant colour of the Spirit, but it's also there in the Father. And the Father and Son 
share in wearing kingly gold, but much more of it adorns the Father. And Jesus alone wears that dark maroon colour and that represents his earthly humanity. Not often spotted in this picture, behind Jesus, there's a tree representing the human tree of life, but also with an echo of the wood of the cross because, as we know, Jesus was nailed to a tree. It's very deliberate that all three figures are actually the same size. If you measure them, they're exactly the same size and they look very much alike, showing that they're equal members of one family, the Trinity. But in doing so, the artist makes Jesus seem to us to be larger than we'd expect if there was normal perspective at work. The perspective that's being used is what's called reverse perspective, making the focal point not Jesus as you might expect, but outside of the picture, the focal point is us drawing us into the picture. But maybe the most important message of this picture is that God is a community of three equal persons and it's this community that wants to draw us in. Imagine now that you are at that focal point And you're going to walk towards Jesus in the middle. As you approach him in the centre, you become embraced by both the Father and the Spirit on either side. And that resonates with our experience of the journey of faith. The closer we get to Jesus, the more we're blessed by God the Father and empowered by the Holy Spirit. In the middle, at the bottom, is a representation of the communion table, reminding us that when we gather for communion, we're surrounded by all three persons of the Trinity. We're drawn to Jesus, who instituted the sacrament of the Last Supper, but through communion, we come closer to God the Father and get renewed by the Holy Spirit. Finally, something that I've only come to understand when preparing this talk. If you draw a line down the edges of the Father and the Spirit, the edges closest to Jesus, if you draw that line on that picture you end up drawing the shape of a wine goblet. And in the middle of that wine goblet is Jesus, representing Jesus in the cup of suffering. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that there's no biblical basis for the doctrine of the Trinity. But I beg to differ. Consider these selected words from the first chapter of John's Gospel. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. So the Word became human and and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. And then John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, The one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest 
is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the chosen one of God. And there you have it, within that wonderful prologue to John's Gospel, the three persons of the Trinity interwoven into the story. But that's not the only biblical passage bringing the three persons of the Trinity together. Our two Bible readings this morning do just the same. Paul testifies we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith in Christ, we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. And then John tells us that Jesus said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. And there you have it. In Jesus' own words, the linking of the, his Father, himself, and the Spirit he leaves for us. Finally, I have a thought experiment for you. Imagine a ball, a big ball if you like, and we're going to call this ball God. Imagine that you've got three colours to colour in three equal segments of the surface of the ball. And we'll, we'll choose the colours from our Rublev's icon. We'll choose gold, maroon and green and like the to uh, just like the dominant colors in that picture think of looking at each segment in turn when you look at that ball and we let's say we're looking at the gold segment you would see it fringed by a little bit of maroon and a little bit of green turn the ball round Look at the green. It's fringed by gold and maroon. Turn it round again. Look at the maroon. It's fringed by gold and green. And that reminds us that whenever we look at one of the persons of the, spirit, of the, of the Trinity... Whichever we choose to look at, we see a little bit of the other two. If we look at Jesus, we see a little bit of the Father and the Spirit. If we look at the Spirit, we see a little bit of Jesus and the Father. If we look at the Father, we see a little bit of Jesus and the Spirit. Whichever one we look at, we see inevitably a little bit of each of them. But why I really like this image of the ball is because it says when we look at each of the three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, we only actually see what's on the surface. There's so much more that lies within that ball, under the surface, that we cannot see the mystery of God. In some sense, Heaven lies within that ball, completely surrounded by the Father, Son and Spirit, a place where we finally get to understand deeply and what God is all about. And we praise God for all that he has done. The mystery of creation, the grace of forgiveness, the fruits and gifts of the Spirit, we see them all clearly. 
when we're inside that ball, when we're inside heaven. And you might ask, well, why is this doctrine of the Trinity, with all its complexity, so important for my faith, for our faith? Our God is a God of love who longs to be in close relationship with every one of us, his children, the children of God. He longs to draw us into that picture, to draw us into that community of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Yet, of course, he knows we're all different. So he provides different ways for us to experience him, to begin that relationship with him. Some people might start their journey of faith by marvelling at God's creation with all its beauty, complexity and mystery and so find the Father, the Creator. Some might start by sensing the Spirit welling up within them giving them guidance, insight and words to say and then leading them to Jesus and to the Father. And yet others will start with Jesus, a person they can understand and read about, recognising all that he did when he walked the earth, giving us inspiring teaching, showing his power and love through miracles and showing us what real service looks like being prepared to die for us that we might be forgiven and come more fully into that precious relationship with God. Yes, we have a multi-dimensional God for a varied humanity, loving and blessing us however we find it easiest to come to him. Amen. Thank you, Dave, for that very interesting way of, of looking at the Trinity, and I hope that's been helpful um, to everybody this morning. We're just going to respond to what we've heard. Um, we're just going to have a moment of quiet, and I'm going to read a prayer that was part of my um, daily reading this morning. Thank you, Father, for loving me with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Inspire me this week to love you more with all of mine. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithful and sacrificial friendship. Help me this week to be a faithful and sacrificial friend like you. And thirdly, thank you, Holy Spirit, for listening to my many thoughts and words and dreams. Still my soul this week to listen much more carefully to yours. Amen. And we're now going to have the prayers led by Rachel. Let us pray. Lord, we have peace with you because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. We thank you, Lord, and ask that we would confidently and joyfully look to share in your glory. As we face problems and trials, be with us, Lord. Help us stand firm. Let us not lose hope in you. And we ask that we would develop endurance and strength of character. Lord, we look to our world and see so much suffering and pain. We remember Ukraine in our prayers and lift all the people suffering there. We ask for a solution to the fighting, an end to this war, 
we desperately ask for peace to reside there. Lord, be with all the people displaced. Find them shelter, rescue them. Those in sadness, torn apart from loved ones or have lost loved ones, be with them. Change the hearts of the perpetrators of the violence there. End this. With the cost of living rising, we ask for help for those struggling financially. Give them strength, wisdom, endurance, support and help that they need. For people suffering and in extreme poverty, please be with them in their trials. Support and resource those who are, who are able to help them. We also lift to you those who are suffering mentally. Those find it, finding it hard to cope, ridden with anxiety or depression, lift them out of it. Give them the strength they need to keep going. May there be support for them. Guide all the children taking exams now, Lord. May they know your calm resting over them as they strive to do their best. And may they know that your unconditional love will be with them in their future. We pray for the coming week ahead and for all that is happening here at St. Richard's. We pray for the children's groups that you would bless them and be with them and their leaders. We pray for the people coming into church for the coffee mornings and other groups that they would feel welcome and blessed and sense your presence. Be with those among us suffering, those enduring hardships. Help them to persevere and know that they are surrounded by your love. We remember those known to us. Be with us this week in every moment, in the joy and in the trials. May we look to you, trust in you, and hold fast to the knowledge that you love us. Surround us with your love. Amen. Now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're coming to the end of our service now, um, and I'd like to invite you all to stand to declare what we believe. So we're going to say um, a creed together. We believe in God above us, creator of all things, sustainer of all life. We believe in Christ beside us, companion and friend, redeemer of all the broken pieces of our universe. We believe in the spirit deep within us, advocate and guide who lives with us eternally. We believe in God's resurrection created world where all things are fixed and all creation fits together in vibrant harmonies. We believe in God above, beside, within. God yesterday, today and forever. The three in one, the one in three. We believe in God. Amen. And now we're going to sing about the hope that we have in Jesus by singing Cornerstone.
Jesus friend I've only trust in Jesus Take a seat and Paul's going to bring us our notices. Thank you very much, Jill and Dave and Rachel and Beryl, uh, for taking part in our service this morning and leading us in what is, um, it's a, a, a great theme, but if you're like me, I go away from Trinity Sunday realizing the gaps in what I understand, and I think that's okay. Um, our daughter Hannah met with our bishop a few weeks ago, and um, she asked him some questions, and she asked him quite a few questions about the Trinity. Um, which, which part of the Trinity would you most like to be? And he said, well, I, I understand what Jesus is like. I can kind of understand what the Father's like because I'm a dad. I have no idea what the Spirit is is like but I can see the effect of the spirit and I think sometimes we can try to understand the trinity and maybe we never will it's called an unfathomable mystery so today is really helpful thank you um, everyone if you go away thinking I still don't understand that's okay did someone say something no okay um Right, notices, very quickly. Um, by the door as you came in, you may have seen a table with um, these newsletters. We did a newsletter at Christmas, um, and we're going to do try and do one every six months. So if you have delivered a set of newsletters through doors in our parish before, um, please do take some again. Um, if you would be willing to just put these through a, a road, a street, they're all batched up in different um, streets, um, if you could do that for us, that would be amazing. At Christmas, there was one person who delivered about a fifth of them. 
which is about 500. Really like to avoid that happening this time. So if you could do that, that would be brilliant. The other thing to say is we've got our St. Richard's Festival coming up on the 16th and 17th of July, I think it is. We've now got a sign-up sheet on the board. So if you would be willing to look after a stool or if you'd like to bring a stool, if you've got a small business or you do um, kind of handicrafts, that kind of thing, if you'd either write your name on the list or if you could let me or Debs or Wendy know that would be brilliant. Otherwise, I think it's a normal week this week, um, so everything is running as normal. Thank you. So let's finish our service with a blessing. May the God of mystery increase our longing for understanding. May the God made manifest in Jesus the Christ increase our compassion. May the God of mission increase our zeal for truth and justice. And may God, the Holy Trinity, bless, preserve and keep us today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us and please stay for refreshments. Thank you.